The first reading is from Exodus chapter 34. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 99 responsively. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord, great in Zion, is high above all peoples. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among your priests, and Samuel among those who call upon your name, O Lord. They called upon you, and you answered them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies and the decree that you gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were our God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill, for the Lord our God is the Holy One. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Since then, well, chapters 3 and 4, sorry. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside but their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, when Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from the one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we command, commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for our gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, about eight days after saying these things, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which, was, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. 
Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is only a child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, you faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him into the ground in convulsions, but Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends, grace to you and peace to you from the one who shines with the glory of the Lord, the light of the world, the one who saves God's people, Jesus. Amen. This past Monday, like most Mondays, I started the week reading the Bible lessons for today. I send them out uh, via email on Monday mornings to the group that comes to Bible study on Wednesday night. And if you'd like to participate, you're welcome. Send me an email, and I'll email you the texts too. And then on Monday afternoons, I attend a Bible study of Longmont Lutheran pastors up, up in the town I live in. And from the moment that I read these passages Monday morning, one sentence caught my attention. It's from the Exodus story of Moses climbing the mountain to be with God and descending to bring God's word to the people. Scripture reads, Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin on his face shone because he had been talking with God. Moses did not know. He quickly found out, though, as he approached his fellow Israelites and Aaron, he found out that his face was shining because they were horrified. They were afraid to even come close to him. And when he walked toward them, they probably repelled. They stepped back. And the looks on their faces, well, I imagine he saw in their faces a look of horror and confusion. And that must have troubled him, too. All Moses could have guessed was that he scared them. Perhaps that scared him, too, that awkward fear. I imagine there was some dialogue I don't know what they said, because we don't have record of that. But when they heard the voice of Moses from the shining face, perhaps their fears subsided some, and Moses could ask them, what's going on? Or maybe they just told them, told Moses what was happening to his own face. I couldn't stop thinking this week about Moses and the idea that he was unaware that his face was changed. He didn't know that his own face was shining. How odd is that? 
And the writer didn't need to tell us that he didn't know. I mean, the story of his shining face would be fine without that specific detail about his self-knowledge. We would still understand the story and take a lot away from it. Why would the writer remind us of the fact that Moses didn't know? Moses couldn't see that he was changed, but others could. And I think that can tell us about life with God and life with God's people. We need each other. We need others because others can help us know what's going on even with ourselves. Others can help us learn about ourselves. We need others because they bring a perspective to see things that we can't. We need their perspective on our lives. Their perspective might be helpful. It might be threatening. It might even be scary. And sometimes it can be silly. But we need others to more fully know ourselves. They can help us understand ourselves, our likes, our dislikes, our manners, our presence, and what we bring to our relationships. Shortly after birth, we humans develop a dependency on others, not just for physical and emotional needs, but for our need to develop our own identity. Who we are depends to a large degree about who we're with, who we're around. And what we think and know about the world that we live in is oftentimes learned by our interactions with others, with those around us. We share experiences. We reflect together. And from that, we grow together. Our faith development is really no different. We develop our faith to a large degree by our interactions with others. Jesus, in the Gospels, did not work alone. He worked with disciples, and those disciples didn't work alone either. They worked with other disciples. All were sent by Jesus to go and to make disciples as they lived their lives of faith. And we still do that. The church does that yet today. We might think of our faith as a personal matter, but that's not Christian. We live our life in community with others. And we can't be God's people without our community. We can't live the life that God calls us to live personally because we share it with others. We can't be the light to the world without accompanying others. And we often see the light through others too. By their words, by their deeds, we know the love and the grace and the light of Christ. We know that the hope we have, the kind of faith that we hold together, is a kind of faith that lives in our relationships. And that hope that we have lives even in death. The kind of hope that is bold enough to proclaim life even in the midst of death. Moses didn't know that the skin on his own face was shining. I couldn't let go of that verse all week. And I think part of me found comfort knowing that Moses didn't know that. Especially as I remember the last two years. It has been almost two years since we changed everything to deal with the COVID pandemic. Two years and two weeks ago, the people of Prince of Peace met for worship for the last time in 2019. Some of you were here and remember that. It was a Wednesday night during Lent and our last gathering before closing our in-person worship. That happened on March 11th. 
During that time that we were closed, I felt like a pastor who couldn't see what he looked like, who couldn't see what was happening to myself. And yet I somehow trusted that God would work, but I wasn't sure what I was doing. I mean, I knew what I was doing, but I couldn't tell if God's work was being done. How does a minister ordained to a ministry of word and sacrament know if God's work is being done without gathering to hear the word and to share the sacrament? I knew that some of you watched the video messages. I knew some of you watched and sang along with the hymns that were recorded. Lori came and recorded hymns. Cheryl and Glenn came and recorded hymns. I knew that some of you shared communion in your homes, but it was different. My community of faith wasn't here anymore, and as a pastor, I need you. I need this community to help me see what God is doing in our life together. As Moses came down from the mountain. With two tablets in his hands, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone. Sometimes we can't see how God is working in us. And sometimes we don't know how God is working in us. Sometimes we are like Moses who couldn't see how God had changed him. We don't always know how God changes us either. The risk is that we give up. The risk is that we never see or never know. And that's a risk that God takes with us. With us. By choosing us, just like the 12 disciples, to be the ones to make more disciples, God takes that risk. It's a risk that God takes by calling us. But God does not take that risk lightly. We might not see, and we might not know, but God sees and God knows. And God has given us a hope. A hope. A hope that is based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ secured by that same resurrection of Jesus. A hope that makes us act with boldness. As Paul said today in our reading from 2 Corinthians, hear these words, Since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. We have a hope unlike any other hope that's based on the resurrection to new life of Jesus Christ and of all God's children. Even when we can't see what God is doing with us or through us and to us, we hope. We do not lose heart. Someone might see that before you do from a different perspective. We need each other. Thank you, and thanks be to God.